The Book Club, 1984 by George Orwell with Dave Rubin. Let's see what they got to say. Let's do it. Let's get it. Here to help me understand the world we're living in, I'm sorry, I mean 1984 by George Orwell, <laughs> the great Dave Rubin. Dave, thank you for being here. Knowles, it's good to be with you. I mean, that is not a joke, what yeah. you just started there. This is the world we are living in. I want you to I tell was me. thinking of calling you Winston, and you can call me Winston <laughs> yeah. throughout this. We should just call each other Winston. We are living because in... Because we're all Winston now. Yes. Winston, the protagonist of 1984. Tell me if this sounds to you yes. like a paragraph of a novel or like a news story about our world right now. Wait, before you even read the quote, you could literally pick any quote <laughs> yes. from the book and it is applicable now. So whatever you're going to say, right. No, you're right. I am going to agree, but I will jump off. I've noticed your... this one actually, some people have been picking up on this. 1984 is having a sort of renaissance it these is. days. Yeah. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And that process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. Sounds like life on Twitter. Yes. Right? I mean, an <laughs> endless present. And that was part of what the system was trying to do. The Ministry of Truth and Winston worked there, and he was one of the people that was basically using language yeah. to confuse people. He was intentional. I mean, that was the whole purpose of all of this was to get people to question everything, right? Well, I, I what, is, get, what is two plus two equal again? I mean, th it, this was the yeah. ultimate purpose. I, I want to get to this language point, because yeah. I think yeah. this is the rookie. Uh, just a quick summary for those of you who haven't read it yet. And if anyone hasn't read it, I guess you're getting the real life experience of it, but it's still worth reading to help you understand, especially your world right now. It's about Winston. As you say, Winston is this guy. He's living in a totalitarian state called Oceania. Yep. It's all run by one party. He's in the outer party. He's still in the party, but he's in the outer mm -hmm. party. There's the inner party that really runs things. He works at the Ministry of Truth. What does the Ministry of Truth do? Spreads lies. Spreads lies. Rewrites the past. Branding. It's all about branding. It's all right? about branding. They have this area where they torture political dissidents. What's it called? The Ministry of Love. Mm -hmm. And they're uh, the the totalitarian government is referred to as Big Brother. Big mm -hmm. Brother is always watching you through screens, through TV cameras, always monitoring you. It's funny how they call how they call the totalitarian government Big Brother. It's supposed to be like a Big Brother. Think about what a Big Brother is, right? A Big Brother is somebody who looks out for your well-being, who will protect you, who who will um, show you things and, and show you the ropes, you know, and encourage you. You might get in, uh, some tussles with him, but he loves you ultimately. Mm -hmm. So this totalitarian government is called Big Brother. Mm -hmm. They're always watching you. They're always watching <laughs> over you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what do you think about what they saw, said so far? Yes, it's, it's all a mess. Like you said, like they, the, the Ministry of Truth spread uh -huh. lies. <laughs> ministry of Love torturing folks. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. 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 So the minute, yeah, like you said, the Ministry of Truth. Remember that, um, on the movie, how he was writing the article and then he was like this chess player just, just won or whatever. And he called for a picture and he got this random picture and put the, uh, some mm -hmm. random picture on the, on the oh, uh, okay. article. Like this, this is just fake news. Mm -hmm. And, um, it is. What we're seeing now is a lot of fake news. We're seeing, People being um, slandered and um, their character misaligned. And then when the truth comes out, like, oh, they were lying about this. It's like no one cares. Mm -hmm. No one cares that they just uh, voted in a candidate based on complete lies. Mm -hmm. They don't even care. They don't even go back and say, wait a minute. They right. fooled me. <laughs> right. That was, the, <laughs> that was the deal all along. Or they make they make these grand promises. I'm gonna do this. This is my campaign. Blah 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 blah. blah. They never do it, but yet the people are still they still look at this person as a good leader. Like this is this was a good president, even though he never did any of the things he said. Right. Or they have completely different platforms than than what they stand for mm -hmm. after they get elected. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Let's listen to some more of this. Winston has this sort of illegal love affair with this girl, Julia, mm -hmm. and they're just trying to escape this modern totalitarian madness. Finally, they're caught out. Doesn't end well Does for them. not end well for him. And then, as you just alluded to, at the very end, they're torturing him and torturing him and trying to break his spirit and trying to break his mind. 
How do they do it? He fears rats and they put basically a contraption on him with rats and they're trying to, in effect, get him to sort of out the, himself and her and the people that are that are rebelling in essence. And he basically points to her and, and causes them to put the rat trap on her and sells that's her That's sort out. of what we're dealing with right now. Well, I mean, and, and there's also this, this point, once he says, go get her, go yeah. get her. There's this intellectual admission where they say, what is two plus two? Yeah. And what is two plus two and is two four. Plus, yeah, no. No. Five. You have to say, you have to believe that two plus two equals five. Look, everything, it's so bizarre <laughs> to see this um, right now because, or to read this. So I originally read the book, I think I was in 11th grade. So yeah. this is long, this is like 92 or something like that, 93. It's a long time ago. And then I reread it over the last couple months. And, you know, on Twitter, it's like everything that we're seeing, nothing means anything anymore. The way words are constantly used or everything that we hear without making this too political to the day right now. It's so hard much not of, to. You know, it is hard <laughs> not to, but so much of what we hear about from the left is exactly what 1984 is about. So hmm. words are violence now, but violence is not violence. These are things that they create to <laughs> actually make us question everything. And then once you question everything, well, then gender is up for question. And it's how they do. Silence is violence. Y'all better not be quiet. You better speak up and say what we want you to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or else. Because, or, or the, otherwise, your words are vi violence now. And now, because you've committed the violence of right. speaking the wrong words, we're not going to... Right, you get this hug. We're going to issue... Um, some, some some love some love to you, and <laughs> <laughs> so say what we want you to say, or else. Okay, now have a good day. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think about what what he said so far? It's it's a lot to yeah. unpack, really. Yeah, this good thing you want. <laughs> and all of the things that should be settled are no longer settled. And then what I f completely forgot about that I found was interesting is that one of the things that they're also trying to sort of untie, that the Ministry of, Untr of Truth is trying to untie, is the idea of time. And it does feel like right now that time feels a little weird. It's partly because of the lockdown, partly because you know we're we're trapped at home, we're all on social media. But doesn't time feel mm. sort of sort of strange right now? Like anything could happen at any given minute. Right. And I think that all leads to a sort of well, sick society where two plus two eventually will be five if they just tell you. There are so many of these contradictions. We're already there. We're already there where you say there's two genders and, and they're saying, oh, there are unlimited amount of genders. Mm -hmm. How many genders are there? Infinite. There's infinite amount of genders. <laughs> <laughs> like these people are crazy. <laughs> Cuckoo. Absurdities that come up. I mean, the three slogans of the party that you've yeah. always got to repeat. They've got it on the back of the book right here. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. This could be the chance of protesters that we see marching all around the West. Quite literally. I mean, one of the things that I talk about all the time now is that it's the anti-racists who are the racists. Right. Now, right. If you, yeah. if all the people that are running around now proclaim, proclaiming that the rest of us are racists, they're the ones that are pushing racism into society every, right. everywhere. They're the ones that are saying black people should have special dorms and that white people shouldn't you know, be uh, be allowed to have certain jobs or that they shouldn't be considered equally. Mm -hmm. uh, those are racist notions. So we live in a time where everything has been flipped. And for the few of us that uh, have a little bit of the spark of Winston, it's like, how do you make sure you're not one of the people who at the end is going two plus two equals five? I'm not sure. I, I will tell you one other thing. I'm actually watching The Handmaiden's Tale yeah. right now. Did you watch it by I, any chance? I did. I've seen some of it, not the so, whole thing. So I'm watching it right now. And the parallels to 1984 are absolutely right. incredible because this is exactly uh, what the main character, June, is going through. And it's so funny because the show came out a couple of years ago and everyone kept saying, this is what's happening in Trump's America. Yeah. Except I'm watching it now in the midst of, you know, what's happening with Black Lives Matter and everything else. And it's like, no, it's all the left. <laughs> it's this America. It's this yeah, yeah, America. It's not Trump that's doing this. It's, yeah. it's the other guys yeah. that are doing this. So 
I think more than anything else, there's a beautiful thing when you read a, a work of fiction when you can go, holy cow, this was not only, it must have been true or true enough to have made sense when it was written. What, what year was the book written? Like, the book was, I guess, written in 1948, published, I think, in 1949. Okay, so 49. I mean, think about that. 70 plus years ago. Um, wow. But yet feels like literally everything we're going through right now. Yeah. That, that's an incredible uh compliment to a writer and to a to a work and he articulates this concept i mean the, i think the great one you use is yeah. that the people who say they're anti-racist are the ones who are acting in a racist <laughs> way and the way george orwell describes it is he calls it double think mm -hmm. so double think is this idea that you, you hold two contradictory ideas at exactly the same time so you, you can never admit that the ideas don't make any sense. But you, So, for instance, we have to w get rid of America's terrible past, which had segregation. And the way we're going to do that is institute segregation. Through segregation. Look, yeah. think about it this way. What's like the hottest book on the left right now? It's White Fragility. Yes. What's the subtitle of White Fragility? I don't know what it is exactly, but in essence, it's something like how white people can blah, blah, blah. That's racist. Yeah. That in <laughs> yeah, and of right, itself right. is racist. Yeah. Forget white fragility. Well, but then if you say how white people, the implication is all white people are this, whatever yeah. this is, that is racist. So you, they hold these two ideas that are completely at odds with each other, and they hold it because that allows you to believe anything basically at any given time. This is the key. Yeah. You know, so many words just have entered our language because of this book. Mm -hmm. Words like double think or new speak mm -hmm. or, or big big brother is one. And new speak is the one I want to focus on because yeah. new speak is political correctness. Yeah. And the theory of new speak is that the party, big brother, is going to get rid of all the old language that people have used for centuries and centuries and replace it with this new ideological party approved clean language, which sounds robotic. It sounds so crazy. I instead of saying something is bad, you'll say it's ungood or double plus ungood. Right. right. But so what does that sound like We're, right now? It sounds like he, him, they, yes. her, all of these things. So again, it's like, wow, how did he do this? In 1948, I'm not yeah. exactly sure. I think there's some relation to, you know, it's after World War II, and there, there's obviously some parallels to the way the Nazis use language and things like that. Um, but it's still, it's still pretty remarkable. And, and I guess the premise, as you touched on, yeah. is that if I change my words, if I change the language, I will change reality. Mm -hmm. and this ties into the insistence of the government. You have to believe that two plus two equals five, because if we all really believe that then that will be true. And it seems to be the same thing when you call a he, when you call him, her, you have really substantively changed who he is. Yeah, well, this what's interesting about this is I think when most people, maybe not my conservative friends, but when most people think of like the totalitarian, authoritarian yeah. state coming, they always think it's gonna be a far right state. Like the idea in 1984 is that the Ministry of Truth, like the, the whole apparatus is somehow thought of as far right, I yeah. think is the idea. Um, if you like something like V for Vendetta, it's the idea is that it's this far right political machine that's silencing people and everything else. And yet look what's happening in reality now. In reality now, it's this far left thing that's seemingly bubbling up from the bottom. Yeah. And that's an interesting flip on mm. this. So it's it's one of those things where it's like there's so much truth and yet there's still these like offshoots where you can kind of go, oh, it's not exactly right, but it's like it's pretty much there. Well, even slight. Oh, it's a lot to, un to unpack. Mm -hmm. What sticks out in my mind is the whole gender debate, right? How... If you don't agree with this, I, I shared a post today because I thought it was funny. There was It was just a picture of a man and a woman, and the, the caption was like, there are only two genders. And then the gender of the male was, was on there, and the gender of the woman was on there. And then their Facebook had a, um, a fact check on it that said, this is false information. And I shared it because I was like, are you serious? If I put a post saying there are unlimited genders, I would not get a fact check from from Facebook. Mm -hmm. But if I say there there are only two genders, they'll they'll put a fact check saying this is this is false, false information. So I shared it. And and when I went to share it, this is important as well. When I went to share it, there was a warning that was like, you're about to share something that has false information. 
uh, your your posts may not appear on the news feed and all this type of stuff. I shared it anyway, but I was like, hmm, it's very interesting. It seems to me that they're they're slowly they're slowly going towards this totalitarian um, government where you're not you're only allowed to say what they want you to say, and they're using social media because they've they're they've got people hooked on social media, so they're using social media as their as their tool, right? They're saying, oh, it's not real. Social media is not real. But yet they're trying to uh, do like the meta thing mm-hmm. where people are literally plugged into Facebook. Yeah. Like you just like their life is Facebook or social media. They don't have a life outside. Like their reality is virtual. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's, it's crazy. Any final words on oh, this? Yeah, what stuck out to me, of course, is the new speak, the double speak, the change in the words. Just everything like we see like every week now they're like changing the the um definitions and yeah. you know the dictionary yeah or what was like a preference like we saw today a sexual preference yeah it's now offensive yeah yeah and i thought that was just like like why, why is why that offensive? feel the need to like go in a dictionary and change the words right it's, they're, they're pretty much creating they did. a new speak yeah dictionary. when the, when the lady yeah. said that sexual orientation is offensive the Webster Dictionary changed se- the word sexual orientation to say offensive. offensive. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's absolutely nuts. <laughs>